Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is former BYU head basketball coach and one of our good friends, Steve Cleveland. Coach, great to have you on on a very exciting day for college basketball. It is. Good morning, guys. You get your Good bracket. Idea. You get your bracket filled out. Uh, you know what? I still have to do that, and I have a deadline in, a, in about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll start with the NIT conversation, Coach. Uh, what was your reaction, just overall, to BYU's performance against Stanford? You know, I actually love the energy, the fight, the grit, everything that took place in that last forty-five seconds, right to the end, and. Uh, you know, there were a lot of things that happened during the, the course of that game, but I, I just think back to last year where I don't know that everybody was all in about even playing that game, and they had injuries. There was a lot of things going on. But uh, And I also like the fact that Coach Rose got a technical, and from then on they went on a 10-0 run. So no <laughs> one gave up. The coaching staff didn't give up. The players didn't give up. And uh, it, it was an amazing ending. I didn't go the way BYU would have wanted it, but it was a great fight. I think it's somewhat emblematic of, 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 of the season where the guys competed and right to the very end. Let's get to how we define the season and kind of next year in a moment, but uh, multiple reports coming out now. John Rothstein of FanRag Sports, now Jeff Goodman of ESPN at one minute ago, uh, confirming that McNeese State appears they will hire Heath Schroyer. Your reaction to that news? Well, I'm, I'm happy for Heath. Uh, you know, the, he has been contacted by a few different schools, and uh, and I obviously I've been aware of some of the things going on behind the scenes. But I'm happy for him, happy for his family. Uh, he, uh, I thought he had a real positive impact on the program at BYU. He loved being with Coach Rose and all the players. I know that he shared with that with me many times, and loves BYU. But uh, this is a business and supporting your family, and uh, he'll be up for a new challenge. And they're they're very fortunate to have him. For the head coaching job, I want to just make sure I'm clear, for the head coaching job at McNeese State, what kind of challenge is it to replace an assistant coach and what kind of options maybe are out there for BYU? You know, I, I think there's always a void left no matter who the assistant is because uh, that particular person had relationships with players and uh, that's an important part of this process. Uh, you know, it's not my decision to decide who Coach was. I mean, I, he's got a wonderful, very capable young man. I don't know what Lee Kamard's goals are in, in, in terms of this business, but uh, he, he wouldn't have to look very far for an outstanding young man that could fill that shoe, and he's, he's part of a lot of the championships that Coach Rose coached, and but there, you know, I know I, I can't speak for Lee and I can't speak for Coach Rose, but he's one person on the top of my mind that just says, hey, he'd probably be a real good fit, and uh, he and he have been really close and uh, share a lot of the same philosophies of the game. There are other names, obviously, a ton of options there, but uh... Uh, obviously, a, a guy like Marty Wilson who's available at this point, I'd be wondering about him. Can you get an NBA assistant coach like Mark Madsen or Alex Jensen? Can you get Spencer Nelson from Utah State? I don't know the interest, but there's certainly some options out there for BYU. There are. I, I don't see the guy. The guys that are currently in the league right now are, are in a really, really solid position. Yeah. And uh, I, I would be really surprised if any of them left those. Alex has a lot of responsibility with the Jazz, and Mark does with Lakers. So. Uh, but you never know. There, there are people out there, and, and Coach Rose is in the mix with uh, all of the assistant coaches. You know, these are things as a head coach you can think about a lot. And you have a short list, and uh, I'm not sure who's on that list because I've not had that conversation with Coach Rose. But there, there, are, there are good people out there that could help the program. Steve Cleveland, former BYU basketball head coach, friend of BYU Sports Nation, talking about the overall season for the Cougars. And maybe it is the coaching turnover with Heath Schroyer reportedly leaving for the head coaching gig at McNeese State. Or maybe it's who comes back for BYU basketball on the roster next year or what Gonzaga does and the rumors that they might go to the Mountain West Conference. But all of that considered, what's your biggest question surrounding BYU basketball going into the offseason? You know, I, I, I would preface this by saying I think they made some really, really significant steps forward in terms of improving in areas, in terms of just a culture of accountability. I think that defensively there's a system in place. There seems to be good chemistry between the coaches and players, uh, time and score shots, decision-making. I think all of those were improvements. So I think those were things that they really focused on last summer, and, and, and they were really much, much improved and had significant success. Now, going forward, I, I think you, gotta, you can't – right now they can't – they don't have any control over what Gonzaga does or anybody else does in this league. I think the thing they need to really focus on is is developing a bench that uh, where, where they can have 
game in and game out. I think if there's anything, the bench was a little thin sometimes due to injuries. Those are things you can't control. But if uh, I'm looking forward with this club, you know, uh, another four man that can defend and shoot it from the perimeter. I, I think they need a little bit more depth. They've got some people coming back off of missions. Uh, I think Nick Emery, uh, if he comes back, is going to have a huge impact on the program. We forget how really good he was. And even though he had a real challenging this year, I would suspect that if he does come back, he's going to really help this team. So you're working on, you know, you've, you've Sustain those things that you've improved on this past year. Uh, expectations don't change, and 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 develop this summer with strength and conditioning. Three point shooting has to be a bit of a concern. I think you spend some time. Uh, this team did not shoot the ball from the the three ball like, like I think they felt like they should have, and uh, it stopped them from maybe winning a few of those games. So whatever the coaching staff decides, but you know, getting this team better. The fact is, everybody comes back. There'll be some additions. There'll probably be a little bit of attrition. There seems to be attrition in every program in the country these days. So, uh, but those are the things that come to my mind immediately. Yeah, that's a huge question. Who who returns, and what kind of difference can uh, the newcomers make next season? Let's put a bow on this season. How what, what's the narrative around this season, and how would you define uh, the success of this group? Well, I, I, the things I mentioned just briefly before, I, I think everybody, the things that you can see as you watch a game, what, whether you're a fan or whether you're a coach or you're a broadcaster or a journalist, whatever, I think the things I just mentioned, we saw those changes. I think they add to the success of the season. I think sweeping the entire state of Utah, beating, beating all those schools that they played was significant. Uh, certainly it's been a while since BYU would beat Utah. So that's a good win for the program. But I think really – the, the cherry on top and, and the most important win of the year was beating St. Mary's in the tournament. Uh, that, had, that had been something that uh, BYU had struggled with over the last two or three years. And uh, I think more than anything, uh, it, it, I think it might be a little bit of a changing of the guard. And I think St. Mary's is always going to be really good. Randy Bennett is an outstanding coach, and he's got a pipeline with Australia. But I see BYU slipping in, and, and, and all of a sudden, if Gonzaga's here, then it'll be Gonzaga, BYU. I think those are the teams that return a lot of players. And, and, and then I think the other thing, obviously, the, the bottom half of this league is going to be much better next year. But I think those wins over, that win over St. Mary's, in-state wins, getting to the NIT again, uh, competing with Gonzaga. I mean, in, in the championship game, uh, Gonzaga was clearly the better team. But uh, I think overall, the attitude, the spirit, and the feeling in the program right now is one of looking forward, continuing to get better, and there's some real positive. Just in comparing it to last year, there just seems to be so many more positive things. Despite a loss last night, I think everybody knows that things are in a better place and a better position. Coach, always great to talk to you. You have plenty of time to uh, fill out that bracket and make that final, so we'll let you get to that. And we look forward to an entertaining offseason of uh, discussion around BYU basketball.